Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Test Automation Engineer Certification. We are in Chapter 3 talking about Test Automation Architecture and today we shall be completing this by covering the last topic that is 3.1.5 Applying Design Principle and Design Patterns in the Test Automation. And here we would understand how exactly a Test Automation Engineer become as good as a developer because they are equally creating some code. So this particular topic is very straightforward and very to the point, in fact a very small topic to talk about, but yet important to understand that how exactly a test automation engineer can be as good as developer and what are those ingredients you would need to know in order to build an automation script well, right? Because just like a developer follows a lot of protocols to make sure that their development is up to the mark, a tester also needs to take care of every single principle related to that because they are also building up a development job here. So let's quickly see to that what exactly we have here. Most important thing, of course, the test automation is a software development activity, not to conflict with your becoming a developer. It's more of like a development activity of developing the script. Therefore, uh, design principles and design patterns are just as important for a test automation engineer as for a software developer. So some of the things are very clearly identified here. For example, we also need to stick to the object-oriented programming principle, which are OOPS concept. And there are four major object-oriented programming principle, encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, and polymorphism. And they all stand very simple and straightforward that uh, we need to reutilize things which are created instead of repeating them again and again and making use of an existing class to be called in another class and uh, certainly uh, kind of like abstracting things which are like short shortifying things rather than making it longer for example what you can do with 40 lines of code is there a possibility we can reduce it to 10 lines of code and that can be done so more importantly the oops concept helps us to reduce our effort on building up automation scripts and uh, trying to reduce the complete lines of code to as much as much less as possible so that uh, the maintenance cost on a long run can also be reduced the second important thing we talk about is the solid principles here the solid principle is not about solidifying it is more about it's an acronym of some keywords so it stands for single responsibility open closed then list cop substitution interface substitution and dependency inversions now each one of these have a deep dive of it so certainly someone has to really spend time understanding it but the only reason why i'm not getting into deep dive of it is to understand or let you know that this is not in the syllabus okay they won't ask you that what is list of principle or what exactly open and close uh, you know concept is all about but however on a high level i can certainly talk about these things like single responsibility means that one person is taking the ownership on the script and this person knows in and out what exactly he or she is building up and at that point of time when required any kind of maintenance any kind of change this person would be you know faster in terms of doing such changes open and close kind of thing is more of like uh, the open architecture and close architecture where we talk about things which are uh, going to be integratable or interchangeable with another application like how much interoperability you're going to have with other tools and what kind of exchange and actions will be performed between them and similarly each one of them have something to talk about something to let you know so if you are interested on a personal note you can spend your time exploring them but uh, if in case you don't want that's absolutely fine because the syllabus is not talking beyond this they are not explaining what of these things uh, so you don't have to worry about preparing them for your examination so that's pretty much so these principles basically improve the code readability maintainability and scalability so it totally talks about like tomorrow down the line if you want to make this script interact with something else or perform some other activities then it would be very simple to be done with help of solid principles the next important thing we are talking about is the design pattern you might have heard your designers talking about design patterns when they are being followed but of course in automation we pretty much follow the same right Given that you are an automation tester already, you would be able to relate these things. But if you are new, I would suggest that try them out practically or watch another video on what exactly these concepts are. You would have a better understanding of this. 
So design patterns basically helps us to uh, define the patterns of designing our script. And uh, we have three of them. Of course, the facet pattern, the page object model, and flow model pattern. So facet pattern, pattern uh, basically hides implementation details to only expose what the testers need to create in the test case. And the singleton pattern is often used to make sure that there is only one driver that communicates with the SUT. So it's more of like, uh, you know, you don't showcase everything in the, you know, right part, like right in the script. You have everything somewhere stored, uh, the core scripts, and you're just kind of relating it or in inheriting the classes or the interaction based things, right? We don't really have everything being exposed in terms of the script that what exactly are the integrations happening, what exactly are the interactions happening. So we just perform the script with a high level outline and that would be enough and pretty much to do that. The second option here is the page object model. Here a class file is created and referred to as a page model. Whenever the SUT structure changes, the DA will have to make updates only one place and the locator inside a page model instead of updating the locators uh, in each test case. So I think again, without having a practical exposure, this might be a little difficult to justify things, but it's more of like, say for example, I want to book a flight, then every single line I'm having an identification done. For example, driver dot find by element so and so, and then I want to perform an activity like enter this, you know, send key so and so, or click on this button. So I'm identifying each and every object in each line. But when I know that these operations will be repeated again and again throughout my script, then I create a class, a separate class file, where I define the locators and give an object a name, right? And then I just use this name whenever I need to perform a script. So I can reuse this locators or identified objects wherever I want. And we call this as page object model. The page object model is just set and identifying the object once and then using it for a number of times in my test scripts. So the benefit is that if in case the object attributes changes tomorrow, now if, say for example, I've used it 30 times somewhere in my script, then I don't have to change it 30 places. I'll just have to go to POM, that is project prop page object model, and just update the locator only in that particular segment, that one line, and the object name would refer to that, right? So I don't have to do it 30 times, rather just once. So that's another, another benefit what you have from this particular option. And the third one, of course, is the flow model pattern, which is an expansion to the page object model. It introduces an additional facet over the page object model, which stores all the user actions that interact with the page objects by introducing a double facet design, the flow model pattern provides an improved abstraction and maintainability as test steps can be reused in multiple test scripts. So it's more of like expanding it with the activities of the user as well. For example, there are some basic activities which we quite often perform like searching an order or searching a flight ticket and then modifying it. So I know these are some common operations which I'm using. So I can even put them into the uh, flow model and just like the page object model as you create it object one time and using it whenever you need them. Same way these activities can be related to the libraries kind of concept. And I would create some basic actions like this is a click operation. This is a bypassing of OTP. This is a profile on the browser and I can store them as and when required. So probably say for example, there are three accounts which we need to access then the browser should know which account is accessing so the settings can be applied and then I can perform the required test. Same way I can talk about the environments. I can talk about stage, I can talk about uh, the QA, I can talk about the SIT. So I may have different configurations there. So I can create them as a part of the flow model, just like a page object model and use them as and when I need them. So these are the benefits what you're gonna have uh, as a part of your uh, automation scripting, but indeed, Instead of saying uh, benefits, I would say, this is the logic which we follow when it comes to automation scripting. It means as good as what a developer's job is, a test automation engineer has to pass through that, right? They will have to follow the similar kind of principles to make sure that their practices makes it simpler job for them to maintain it rather than making it complicated and getting it stuck, right? So that's all what we have from the chapter three. The next tutorial will talk about the sample questions and I hope this was clear to you. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. 
Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank <laughs> you.